Well, we've learned how to do stars, a five-point star, in another tutorial. And now I have figured out how to do six-point stars. And this one here is actually pretty simple. It's just a matter of how we start in order to get that. And uh, Daniel actually likes the six-point uh, point star, but we can actually do even more points as we go along throughout the time. So stay tuned, and what we're going to do is the six-point star. In this tutorial, we are doing the six-point star, which is over here, but I have my five-point star over here. And the point of showing you both side-by-side side is that the starting of it is actually different. You will notice, if you look really carefully here, we kind of get into these gaps right pretty soon after the center where in this one here the gaps aren't starting until way out here and because of that because it's a six point star we have to actually grow the interior of the circle more than you would have to do on a five point star and if you went more points in this you would have to continue to grow it even more so we are actually paying attention to an actual stitch count that's extremely important here and I'm going to be taking my time through some of the sections here because we are um, we have to pay attention to our stitch count right in the very beginning and then once we start getting our points of the star you're often laughing to the races so let's get started okay so we're, I'm using a size K hook today I'm using a four ply worsted uh, Bernat wool today and um, this is exactly the same wool that you see in the background this one here is actually a soft and chunky wool which is the more correct size for a size K you can actually see the fundamental differences is that this is more plush and full looking where that one's kind of sparse and holy so let's start off with our slip knot so around our finger twice taking the, the back over the forward taking the back and pushing up now my hands do have uh, some stain on it we are working on another tutorial on how to change a panel door so my hands are uh, they're not dirty they're just stained <laughs> um, so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to do the center point of our thing so this counts already as one so we need to do four all together so one so grabbing the material pulling it through for two grabbing the material pulling three and four okay so now what we want to do is I'm not going to stop the video we're going to do a complete rotation of 12 uh, going around so what we need to do is double crochet going into the very starting stitch that you started with okay so the very uh, start now how do you know you're in the stitch properly well on the top you should have two strings that are side by side and there should be one on the bottom that makes a big difference when going around in a circle so grabbing the material pulling it through you'll now have three on there pulling it through two and then final two okay so let's do it again so we're just going to continue to go into that same stitch 12 times and by doing that what you're doing is causing yourself to be in a circle so let's review the double crochet again so going in so wrapping the material going in, pulling through, pull through two, and two, going again. So going in, pulling it through, and sometimes it's a, it can be kind of a pain getting this started. I actually find these stars a little bit of a pain to get started, but once you get started, you are laughing. So the straggler is kind of getting into our way here, so now we're going to start dealing with that. Because the straggler is part of it, it's kind of pulling into, into the inside of this ring. So what we want to do now is when we go in, go into that same stitch, just like so, and leave this straggler over top of your hook right at this point, pulling the material through and through two and two. And by doing this, now you're locking that string into position so when that you trim the uh, the remainder of that string you know that it's been trapped inside so you'll never see a starting point of your string so you haven't seen me count yet I would like to get a whack of these on board we are looking for 12 altogether and the first chaining of the four that is actually part of the first one so you're actually technically only crocheting uh, 12 so let's uh, review and let's count. So pulling it apart, you can see the coming up. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So I got two more to go. So, so there. And see that straggler is with us right to the end. 
Okay, so I got my 12, and now this is called a slip stitch. And what we're going to do is you're looking for the second right up the top, just like so. Do you see how this one's coming looking at you? This one's kind of looking away from you. What you want to do is come right into there. Make sure that you're just like your side crocheting. Uh, you want two in there and one on the bottom. Do you see that? And then what you do is grab your material, pull it through and through. And that is a slip knot making this completely round. So what we're going to do off camera is I'm going to trim this off so it's not in our way. And we're going to make our way up to the next round. So stay so with I've us. Trim my edge. We're going to continue up now. So we're going to chain up three. So one, two, and three. And this will also count as a post. And for those unfamiliar, the post is the material growing up in between each stitch. So that counts as one. So now this is really extremely important here. We now want to double our size. So we have to put two uh, crochet stitches all the way into each one of these. So we have to count all the way around. This is important. This is what I would do off camera. Because some people see this stitch here and they jump over and sometimes you need to jump over and sometimes you don't. So I'm going to count that when I'm going all the way around and I should have 12. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Okay, so what does this mean then? If that was if this was one and we're going all the way around to be twelve, then that means that the first um, uh, double uh, the first stitch going in will actually be into this piece right here. It will be matching into that post. Just like so. Okay? So now then you work into the next one. And we're going to put two uh, double crochets into each one of the stitches that we're going around on. So in actual fact, we're increasing our dimension now from 12 to 24 by doing this. And you'll see that because we are putting two into each stitch, it's going to naturally want to create the circle on its own. And it creates a nice flat circle, which is what you want. Because if you create a circle and you, don't, and you give too much material, what happens? You get ruffles. Not enough material and you get like a bowl shape happening where it's forming to like a cone shape. And uh, we don't want that either. We want it to be nice and flat. So two into each one and we are going to do a count when we get too close to the end because we want to ensure there is 24. If there's not 24 we need to address that right on the spot and we can fake it if you've messed up in some way or if I've messed up we can fake it. If you've done well then you shouldn't have to. The yarn ball for me is off the table right at this moment and uh, on the floor. and. Uh, it's causing a bit of tension in my hands. Tension is so important as well. It, uh, it, you, you want your tension to be equal as much as possible. Okay, so we appear to be on our last one, but we're going to double check that to make sure before we say that we are. And what we're going to do is count around our stitches. Okay, uh, count the posts. So one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, and twenty four. So we've actually gone all the way around. We have twenty four stitches. So now we're going to just take this and close it by doing it up at the top. So remember what I said it's looking away from you, it's not the one folding down towards you. It's looking away. So you have two up there. You have one in the inner side. And we're just going to grab our material, material, pull it through and through. And there's your next step. So this is our next round. So what we're going to do is build up by chaining a three again. So one, two, and three. And now what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet into the very next stitch. It's not this stitch here. It's the very next one, just right there. So single crochet. So sticking your needle in, okay? You'll have two on top, pulling your material through. So now you have two, and now pull through. 
So now we want to do that again. So we want to now double crochet. So double crochet, we're going to skip the next stitch on the circle and go to the second one over. Okay, pull through, two, and two. And we're going to do that two more times. So we have three all together. Okay, so we have three now in that one. Now we want to create the point, just like you see over here. So we have to do one, two, three. So we chain three, and now going into the very same hole that we just did the other three, we're going to put the, these three in there as well. And that will create the point. Now that we've done that, we now want to skip the next stitch that's in the circle and go to the second one over with the single stitch. So pull through and through. Okay, so let's do another point. So we skip the next stitch, go over to the second one over for a double stitch, pulling it through, two and two. And then we're going to do that three times in a row into the same hole. Okay, we want to create the point, so we're going to chain three. So one, two, and three. Going into the hole again, pull through and two. And we're going to do three more again in that side. So basically, you're causing it to go up one side and down the other by doing this configuration. And so in between each point, we skip a stitch and go to the second one over for a single. And now we're going to do another point. So let's double crochet again, so skipping this next stitch, go into the second over, pulling it through. We're going to put three of those bad boys in a row. Okay, three in a row, now one, two, and three, chaining the three, and then going in for another three. Okay, I think I've screwed up there. I'm going to pull that out. One thing I love about crochet, it's very forgivable. So let's put in our three into that hole again. So let's try again. And hey, you know what? It's not about being perfect in crochet. It's just about trying and really exercising creativity. So I'm not perfect, and I know there's many of you that can crochet better than me, but uh, it's just about trying. So we're going to skip the next stitch, go to the second over for a single. Okay, and now let's go skip again to the second, and we're going to double crochet for making another point of the six star, six point star. So every time we're creating the, the end point of a star, we're always chaining three and then coming back into the same section for three. So basically, three, three and three configuration. So we're skipping the next stitch, going second over for a single crochet. So let's create another point. So skip the next stitch, go double crochet into the second one over. Now, if you think you understand the, this pattern completely, uh, this this um, rotation is not the final rotation of being able to figure out how to do it. So you actually have uh, two more uh, revolutions to do before the pattern becomes repetitive. And that's because we're establishing it off this main circle. So skip a stitch over to the second for a single. Okay, We now have one, two, three, four, five. So we're just going to finish off the final. So coming, skipping over double crochet for three, three, and three. Okay, so that was three, so three chains, and now three. I'm actually using a wood hook today, a size K wood hook. I actually really like my uh, wood hooks. I think they're amazing. Okay, and so now we're going to skip over, and now what we need to do is we need to attach um, this. Now, what we want us to do is kind of lean over onto what's already there. Okay, so by doing so, what we want to do is we want to um, 
we want to slip stitch and you see this this is where we chained up and then we went into the to the single crochet we want to slip stitch into the single crochet area right there and then pull through and through causing this to be a full circle and let's get started with the next section so the next section is where you really have to pay attention when we look at this example here we see holes and we see holes in between the center or the, the two uh, points. So how are we creating that? We're actually uh, being very careful to making sure that we maintain the hole in the center as well as the ones and the and the edge. So in actual fact, when you're slip stitching, you're now see how you're in the center of the two points. You actually need to move yourself toward the left or the right, depending what hand you are. And what we're going to do now is that we're going to start slipping our stitch is over. And what we need to do is we need to get to the second one. See how there's three here? Remember those are the three that went into that, that gap there? What we want to do is we want to make sure that there's only, we want to start off with two. So let's slip stitch. So we go into the very next stitch over, pulling the material through and through. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to end up over top of this post here. So let's slip stitch over once again. So we're going to slip stitch in actual fact twice over. So now you are now over top of this post here. So now we can chain up three. So one, two, and three. So in actual fact, because now you see that it's in the center, when we come back and uh, all the way around, you're going to see this kind of pulling over like this, and it's going to be causing the hole, which is what you want. So we're going to double crochet into the, the top of that other one, the next one. And now we're on an edge piece. Okay, so you're not going to go into, and there's nothing here for you to grab. So that's exactly where you are. So let's put in our 3-3 three, three configuration into this whole uh, section right here. So three double crochets, chain three, and then three double crochets. So one two and three and now going into the same hole again and basically you're making the point now the biggest problem that people have with these stars is the amount of, of sides it's very very easy to have the star grow out of proportion so okay so what you got to think about is that you came up and you you put this one here and this one here before you went to the three so you actually in fact have two here and this is what you got to be paying attention. So whatever you end up after the three on this side, there should only be two because you put two here. The other thing you got to look for here is that the next stitch available to you is not obvious. It's actually, I'm going to use my, pull this out. The next stitch here is actually right here. Do you see that? It's right underneath there. So we just come in and go right underneath. So we grab it by the first one there. And so because we only did, so this is now off to that main uh, corner, okay, just like you have two here, we have to have two on this side. So you just put in one, and now it's the, sec it's the next one. So now you have two. So these two are off the, main, the, the end, and then you have two there that match. So what we need to do now is cr create the jump which is the gap in between. So on this round only, you're going to be jumping to the fourth one. So we go one, two, three, and four. That is your fourth. If you're not sure, do you remember we, we just grabbed the, the two here? Then this one here should be the second one over as well, which it is if you counted four. Okay, so we just double crocheted and it's caused it to be like a V shape upside down V. So we're doing two in a row, just like so, and now we're on to the, the next point, which is the 3-3 three, three configuration. These kind of patterns are very difficult to find or understand them in books. Um, that's why I think a lot of people turn to video tutorials for stars. Okay, so your next one now is we're going to put two. We came in two on this side, so there must be two. And we remember it would come in right underneath, just like so, double crochet. 
and then coming into the next one. So you have your two done. And now we're going to skip to the fourth. So one, two, three, and four. If you're not sure, just look at this and come the second one back for this rotation. Okay, and we're putting our two in a row. And now we're just going to do our 3-3 three, three configuration. Okay, so we're going to, we just did our 3-3, three, three, so we ended up 2 this side, so we have to do the 2 on this side. Again, going under right underneath that first one, and then the second, and now we're going to jump. So you can look either look back, so 1 and 2, so you're there, or you could have counted, so 1, 2, 3, and then this is the fourth. So we put our 2 in a row. Again, crochet is about finding what works for you. Not, you know, certain terminology works for me, others doesn't. Um, certain ideas work for me, others, others don't. You just got to find what makes you happy with crochet and then just run with it. Okay, so let's go in. And we have the two on the one side, this is the two on the other, just like I showed you before. So you really can see that we're really building this rotation that we still have a couple more to go. So this is the two, so let's count back you can, to the two, or you could have counted over to the fourth. So one, two, and three, that was the fourth. Find what makes it easier for you and then run with it. So. Okay, now we're on our edge again, so it's a 3-3-3 three, three, three configuration, it's your triple 3. So 1, 2, and 3. Okay, and now we put 2 on this side, so we're going to put 2 on this side of the, the point. So one, two, three, and four, or you could have counted to the one, two back. So oops, my apologies, I didn't jump to the next one like I should have. I started doing my 3-3 configuration when I hadn't yet hit the edge. And the edge is very obvious because it's a huge gap. So one, two, and three. It's your triple three configuration. We are coming up to the very end of this rotation and where we're going to do a slip stitch. So let's finish this off. So it's creating the two on this side of the point. And now when you look, one, two, three, this is your slip stitch, which is your fourth. So what we need to do is we're right in the very top. We want to make sure that we're going to slip stitch. So just grab your hook stick it into the top section there. You should have two strings on the top, just like so, one on the bottom, pull, grabbing the material, pulling it through and through, and this rotation is done. And notice how your hook is over top of the center section, and that's really important for when we start going to work our, all the way around again. So hold tight, we'll go to our next section. The complexity of the star is now actually done. Now what we gotta do is that we gotta really think about this now. Um, when we come around now, everything now is all going to fall in line as long as you follow this simple concept. When you slip stitch, I can't just start chaining up here. Let me try it and show you. If I chain up here, what's, what's going to happen is that I'm not going to have a gap. 
if I do that. So the answer to chain there is actually wrong. I have to chain up the second one over. So how did I get over here to the second one over? I have to slip stitch right at this point. So we're going to pull through and through and through. So I've just basically slip stitched my point over so now that I'm over top of the second post. Okay, so basically that's what you need to do. So now when I chain up one, two, and three, you can see that it's no longer in the center of the two points. So when I go to uh, connect them together with the next one, it'll be leaned over just like this one, grabbing over. So now what we're, so for every rotation, we increase each uh, point by two. So what we need to do now is double crochet ourselves to the edge on the one side. So remember how I said there was two on one side, two on the other? This time there will be four. It grows by two per side, but four per point. Okay, so the first chaining counted as one, so one, two, three, and four. And there's nowhere to go once you're beyond this section, so we go right into the edge and we're doing our 3-3 configuration. Okay, so that was one, two, and three. And in the next rotation, what we're gonna do is a color change to show you how to do that as well. So stick with me on that, so don't uh, go away. And uh, So now what we had, we had four coming up this side, so we have to have four coming down this side. If we've done it right, you should have four leaving one, the final one in the middle empty. Okay, so the first one is right underneath, just like so you can see it more clearly now. So, so one, going into the next one for two, and then for three, and I haven't checked yet, but there should be one left, and there is. See, it's right here. It's the one leaning over to the middle. So what we want to do now is that we want to, every time we get to this point, we want to skip over this one and this one here on this side. So we want to do that. So double crochet, so one, two, so skip over to the third one. And we're going to do that every time now for the remainder of this project, creating that gap. So these two in the center will always be empty, no matter how big your star gets. And coming up on this side, because we came down four on the other, this should automatically go up four. Okay, and it did, just like so. And now we're on the edge, so let's do three, three, and three configuration. It's your triple three standard configuration. Brought to you by Mikey's Mail. One, two, and three, coming in. I don't know where that commentary just came from, but anyway. <laughs> it sounded cool. So coming in, so we're going to come down this side four, just like we did come up the other side. So going into the very first one. So one, two, three, and four. And there should be one left if we've done it right. And there is, so one, two, so we're going to skip the two middle double crochet ourselves to the third one over. Let's see, so this is empty, that's empty, it's perfect. So we're coming up four on this side. So you got your four. Now let's go on to your edge for your triple three configuration. three. So we're working on a brand new tutorial downstairs. Daniel's taken a flat panel door and made something really totally incredible with it. For just a few dollars he made something that's a few thousand in a magazine just for a few dollars. It's actually incredible. So we're going to come down on this side for four. We came up so we're for four so we're going to get down for four. And so there we go. So 
pulling it apart, so one, two, three, four, should be two left in the middle, which is the next one, next one, and it's the third one over that you come into. So we're going to do a color change, I already, think I already mentioned that, but we're going to do a color change as well in this pattern. Uh, the color change is really, we came up four on the side and we're now doing our 3-3 configuration again on this point. Uh, the color changes really make these blankets outstanding. Um, I've seen full colors of uh, just one color. It is not as remarkable or stunning as it would be as if you would change colors. And the color changing of, this, of these blankets is actually very, very simple. It's very clean. It's hard to notice where you've changed the colors. Just in the way that we're doing our technique um, of this particular blanket, um, everything is just really amazing. These blankets are really wow factors for your friends or for a loved one or for your even your baby that may not <laughs> really even care. So we got four, so we got one, two, going to the third one over. I found I find with these blankets when you post a picture people are like wow and when you take it in to show your friends they're like wow so these are a really great wowing project. So we're gonna do our triple three. Now this rotation here, this everything is the same beyond this, except for the the lengths of counts. So we're coming down four down, or going up four one side, coming down four the other, and so basically the next rotation. Remember I said everything grows by twos, um, so the next one you'll be going up by six into your three three, and then down by six. So one two and three. So if it helps you, and I've done this on my first a few stars, is that you make a list between 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, and 20. Make a list like that and just check it off as you go. Um, I found in the very beginning when I first started doing these stars is that it's very, very easy to start growing one edge um, longer than another. And I, my first star I ever did was totally askew. It was just, it was a mess um, because certain um, I wasn't paying attention to the actual counts, and nor does it tell you in any directions anywhere on what you need to look for. So I had to come up with a way to to show you and to show myself on how to grow these stars in an equal proportion. And uh, by golly, we did figure that out. So okay, and we are actually coming to the final of this rotation. This was a long rotation, uh, time-wise. Actually, it was less time than the last rotation. So we have this gap, this gap, this is your chain. So what we want to do is slip stitch into the top of this chain over here. Okay, so you got your pulling it through and through, and now you've just got your gap. So what we're going to do now is uh, just stay tuned. We're going to change a color right at this point. We always change the color, and uh, we'll let's. Well, well, you don't always have to change color, but this is where you will change a color if you want to. So let's do that next. So the last rotation we just did, um, it's everything else is the same except for when you're growing this thing. So what we're going to do now is we're going to change a color, and this is where we're going to do it. This is exactly where we left off, but this is not where you're going to be starting. But anyway, taking your next material, what we're going to do is create um, a slip knot. And just like over and over, just like so. Now, what we want to do now is that, remember how I told you in the last round that we can't start up from the very beginning. You see over here, we actually have the beautiful gap, and then we created it again. So what we need to do is that we need to move over our crochet hook over one so it's over the second post, not the first. So by doing so, what we're going to do is stick your needle in, and instead of grabbing the, the green, what we're going to do is we're going to put the blue on there, and pull it snug like so and we're going to pull the blue through that and that one okay 
So we're gonna what we're gonna do now is just trim maybe about two inches of the actual green. So now the the blue is now intact. The green is there as well. So what we want to do now is isolate the the stragglers, which are the loose ends, and now we are going to chain up three. So one, two, and three. Okay, so we've come up over, we're using the one just over the second post, which is what we want, and now we're going to uh, go in and now double crochet our way to the edge. So getting the two stragglers, we want to put them on top of the line all the time until they run out. So we're going to double crochet ourselves like that. And this, by doing this, you're hiding the loose ends without ever having a knot. And if they are sticking out after you've gone like an inch or so, then you can safely trim it and realize that you won't affect your project falling apart. So remember what we were working on the last one, we were chaining up, we were going uh, fours. This should be actually six. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's exactly right. So if you still have your stragglers at this point, just continue, just wrap them around the three, three configuration as we go. And if you're tired of it and you think it's long enough, you can always trim it as well. Let's try that one again. And then one, two, and three. Okay. So now we're going to work our way down the other side. So we're going into the very first one, just like we did before. And again, we should be in a six configuration on this round. So it's a six one down a six down up one side and six down the other. So what happens if for example you messed up somehow and you realize that one of your sides is not right? What's your solution at this point? Yeah you could pull it apart but why not fake it if you have to? So the, I'm going to show you how to fake it. So one, two, so we're going to go over to the third because we're jumping into the center. So what happens is if, say for example, there was there is six here, but what if there was only four? Or what if there's only five? Then what you can just do here is just somewhere along this edge, okay, just put in two right into the same hole. Just like so. And then and then move along to your next. And so what happens is that you will see a slight imperfection but when you get the rest of your blanket done, um, it's really going to be hardly unnoticeable. But that's a way of bringing balance back to your actual crochet. So in actual fact, I actually put seven in here. Um, but that, this, that's only for an emergency if you've, if you've decided that uh, that's not right for you. That, or that you've messed up somewhere along the line. So just put in a double in there somewhere that you think is pretty unobvious. Don't put that double in on the edge that will make a difference to your crochet you have to do it along the edge because the next time you come around it'll be there waiting for you to do it properly one two and three and this happens I just had some wool left over from that baby blanket that's in the background And now we're going to come down the six on this side. So basically, you grow this thing as much as you want. I have actually figured out the actual counts to uh, doing a full color rainbow uh, baby afghan. And the afghans will take you about five to six hours altogether for a baby's one. Uh, not very, a lot of time. It's probably two and a half movies. When you think about it, I tend to do all the stuff sampling when I'm in bed watching movies at nighttime with Daniel. He reads cookbooks and whatever, and I crochet. So there's three. Oh, 
Okay, so something is wrong here. I have messed up somehow. You can see that. And so I should have six along this edge, and I don't. Okay, so what's happened here? I'm really not sure. So what we need to do is we need to fake it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to backtrack a couple. And I'm going to fake an extra one in there. So that the next time I come around, it'll be sitting there waiting. So again, I'm not perfect. Nobody is. And, uh, but we need to make sure when you see it that you address it right away. Because if I allow this side not to be uh, fixed it right away, it's going to really stick out like a sore thumb later. These stars, uh, once again, once you get a, a point off, it really is very, very obvious unless you fix it right away. Hmm. I thought I was counting properly too. That's the neat thing about a mistake, isn't it? So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So yeah, the two, it's kind of doubled in there, but it's going to, it'll be fine. And it's better to show you the mistakes that I'm making as we go than it is for me to re-edit them out because chances are you will make them, well some of you will make them yourself and get all frustrated on how to fix it and email me on how to do so. So one, two, five, six. working our way back up this side. So basically you're just following the same configuration you did last time. You're just using a different color and you've just grown a little bit more as we go. And now we're in a 3-3 configuration. I find my office is very difficult to uh, film in. The lighting is uh, really dark, which I don't mind for being on the computer all the time, but uh, definitely being out in the living room here is a lot brighter, naturally, than using artificial lighting. I find that affects the camera's uh, clarity as well. Um, we are working on a new brand new studio for us in the basement that will have mixture, a really good mixture of uh, real light and artificial and uh, I'm really excited about that. So I'm just checking my own work by counting back to make sure. Again, if you want to double check your as you go along, it's a lot easier than finding it later and realizing that you've really messed up to a point you can't fix it. There's some patterns that if you screw up and then you don't notice the line after, it's like, oh my god, you have to pull it all the way apart. And you have to because it's so friggin' obvious that you can't deny it. So, six. And your 3-3 three, three configuration. So we're going to finish our blanket or our afghan right in this particular round. I'm going to show you how to do that as well. But again, you're going to go as big as you want to and as, or as small as you want to. Or you could, I could just make this into a doily after I'm done with it too. I think it will actually match our living room actually. Okay, and this one here, I just noticed I got seven. I'm looking at it. I didn't leave myself a gap, so I'm just going to take it out. So one, two, and the third one over. Okay, and this is four. Six. You could count as you go. I've done that. I did that up into my twentieth 
stitches as I was going around because I was so scared of messing up on my very first one. And my very first one, if you remember, is my star um, Christmas tree skirt that I did. It was a five point star and I was watching that like a hawk. But I was also mixing other materials in. Remember, just because it's one string and one hook doesn't mean you have to stay with one string. You can always add more. I'm going to just uh, be right back in a second. Just stand by. Okay. So what we want to do now is we want to finish this off. Say this was your final edge of your final size that you wanted. We're just going to jump over, so we're just going to do our normal slip stitch, so one, two, and our slip stitch, you see the blues coming back and around, we just want it to go so there's two lines on top, one on the bottom, slip stitch in and in, and what we want to do is we want to finish this off, so over my hand, just like so, trim it, and now we want to pull out the material. Now what are you using this for? It all depends. So what you can just do is just going into the next stitch, just like so, grabbing the material, pulling it through, grab this and put it through again like a knot. And now what we want to do is use the edge to hide that straggler. So pull it through, so throw it over the top, go into the very next one, grab it, pulling it through. Throwing over and through. And you go about an inch or so, maybe even two inches, depending on you. This is called weaving. So what we're gonna do now is pull the edge. Pull it pull it, stretch it, and then we're gonna push it back. But then what's happened when you stretch that you know that if it gets stretched by a child or or somebody that doesn't care about your products that you know that the it won't fall out. So there you go. That is how to complete a six point star.